Right at the Capitol in Lansing, the fall legislative session is less than a week away. Today, Governor Whitmer outlined her administration's priorities in a what's next speech. She touched on the cost of health care, paid parental leave, a commitment to clean energy, and eliminating what she calls outdated abortion rules. Joining us now to talk about these goals is Lieutenant Governor Garland Gilchrist. Thank you for being with us tonight. Thanks for having me. So Governor Whitmer is pushing for paid family leave. What type of policy would that be and for how long? I mean, look, the, the, the details of that are going to be sorted out during this fall session. But what we wanted to make clear is that people should be able to, to have time off to bond with their babies or take care of their sick loved ones. I mean, I did this when my baby girl Ruby was born on Juneteenth in 2019 to try to set a model for it. We've set a standard for this for, for state employees um, to have paid family leave. And we just think everyone should have that right here in the state of Michigan. Now, as the details are working out, can you give us a hint as to who might foot the bill for the extra leave? Well, I mean, there's a lot of different models for this that have already been that are being proposed in the legislature. And so there's going to be a robust conversation and we look forward to having a wide group of stakeholders at the table, the biggest businesses in our community and the smallest businesses in our community. What we know is that uh, this is a wildly popular idea. Two thirds of people across the country support having paid family leave. And importantly, people who are choosing where they want to live and where they want to work. This is one of the top three decision points that they have, what the leave policies are going to be at a company or in a state. So we think this is the right thing to do to help grow our economy in Michigan, to attract talented people all across our state. And we're looking forward to work with this legislature and the coalition to get something done. As children return to school this week in Michigan, what are the plans from your office to help schools and help the education system in the state that obviously needs some attention? I mean, first and foremost, Governor Whitmer and I are continuing to deliver record funding per student uh, in, this, in the state of Michigan. Every year that we've been in office, we've increased that funding. It's 22 percent higher than it was when we took office. And this year, for the first time, every kid in a public school in Michigan will have free breakfast and free lunch. They're going to be able to not be hungry and instead focus on learning. It's going to save parents $850 per child to be able to, again, focus on school and not on their little bellies. I'm looking forward to that. What's going to, we're going to make happen. And we're continuing to support students' success academically through things like the My Kids Back on Track program, which is going to give them additional academic resources during school and during out-of-school time so they have what they need to be successful and to perform. Now, staying on schools, there are a lot of shortages we're dealing with for everyone from teachers to bus drivers. Are there any plans in the works or, or any ideas to help alleviate that? Yeah, we've been putting a lot of aggressive funding into recruitment for education professionals. But honestly, it starts with making sure that education professionals have the respect that they deserve for these very difficult and incredibly important jobs. And that's why Governor Whitmer and I are going to continue to focus to make sure they can have money in their pockets, that they can bargain fairly um, um, with their with their school districts. So that, again, these professionals who do some of the most important work in our communities that we know that we want and need them. We've also helped to increase the pipeline of students being able to get education degrees or certifications. We've started an educator scholarship and a stipend. We're paying student teachers for the first time ever. We started that last year so that people can afford to be a student teacher, to get the hours in the classroom they need to become a full-blown teacher. Um, this is going to make a big difference for more people choosing to be educators, which we need here in the state of Michigan. This 100% commitment to clean energy, do you have a timeline for that at this point? We don't yet, and that's something that's going to be a topic of conversation with the legislature when we come back in the session starting next Tuesday. But what we are committed to is that Michigan needs to have a clean energy future. As we've been seeing intensifying storms, what it feels like every week across Southeast Michigan, but frankly, all across our state, we need to make sure that the way we produce our energy is diverse. Solar, wind, renewable, all of the above we need to be part of the mix so that we can not only get the energy that we need, have it be more resilient, and more affordable, but also be more responsible with our climate here in Michigan. Uh, we are running low on time here, so I want to make sure we touch on the goal of rolling back some of those abortion restrictions. Uh, what would that look like, and do you think there's enough support to make that happen? Absolutely. The people of Michigan spoke with a very clear voice last election when they passed the Reproductive Freedom for All uh, ballot initiative. We want to build on that momentum and recognize that there are still anti-medicine, anti-science, politically motivated laws in the books that require things like doctors to read or show videos to women that have nothing to do with their, their medical condition and everything to do with the politics of the politicians who impose that on them. And we're going to get those bad laws off of the books so that people have the ability to define their family, grow their family, or not grow their family 
family as they see fit and what is the most important economic decision a woman or a person will make, which is how to grow their family. And we're going to make sure you have access to all of your rights and freedoms here in the state of Michigan. And of course, people will want to know, what about the providers that have their own personal objections? Do you envision any and exemptions or exceptions to those rollbacks? Well, again, we want to make sure that the information that a patient is given is based on science and not based on politics. And that's what this law is going to make sure we protect. Lieutenant Governor Garland Gilchrist, we appreciate you being here with us tonight to discuss this. Thank you for having me.